my love, you are giving him way more credit than he deserves. It's actually not him that you're not over. It's the version of you that he brought out of you. The truth is you can be 110% over a person and 0% over the situation. Understanding the difference helps you focus your healing towards the right thing. What's up little sis? My name is Rima and you are now tuned in to another episode of the Arab and Thriving show. Today I want to talk to you about a lot of the misconceptions that people have post breakup. These are literally the things that I wish somebody had told me when I was getting out of a toxic relationship. I had a toxic AF situationship for around four and a half years. It was on and off and at the end of the day, no matter what, if you're spending that much time with somebody or associating with somebody emotionally, it's going to turn you into a version of yourself and when you cut ties with that person, you don't just automatically snap back to the person that you were without that person. There's so much healing and unlearning and disconnecting of the soul ties that get connected during that time that people don't realize is actually what they're going through post breakup. So in my case, when I broke up with my toxic ex, because I was very aware of my feelings and very aware of how to articulate them, this happens a lot by the way, if you journal, you become like super, super able to articulate exactly what you're feeling and distinguish between very confusing emotions. So I highly recommend journaling. At the time I realized like I got over him quickly. Like if anything, I was getting over him during the relationship because as I wanted to make the decision to finally cut it off and move forward I had to kind of get over him and the idea of him in order to have the strength and courage to be able to like move forward and never look back so I knew I was over the person immediately and I'm the type of person I don't know let me know if you can relate where when I decide to cut something off not even just a relationship but just a decision or a habit or whatever like if I really 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 get to a point where I have decided to be done I'm I'm not the person that keeps looking back and second guessing my decision. I'm not the person that asks myself, what if? I understand it's completely different, completely different feeling when you feel like the decision was made for you. If someone broke up with you, if someone cheated on you and you felt like you needed to move on, I know that it feels a lot different when the power was taken away from you in your mind. I also want you to understand that even in the situation, you're probably still giving that person and your feelings towards that person more credit and energy than they deserve. Oftentimes in my experience, when breakups are so difficult, it's because you don't like the version of you that you're left with. You're no longer able to channel that through escapism or being distracted with another person. So now you're left to your own devices, you're left to your own thoughts, you're left to your own habits, you're reckoning with all the time that you spent with someone that maybe wasn't right for you. So it's really you not really being over the situation. You're not not over what happened. You're not over the events. You're not over how those things made you feel. So here are three things I really want you to focus on when you are trying to get over this person. Number one is I want you to once again understand the difference between getting over them and getting over it. Getting over the person and whether or not you still want to be with them and getting over the situation and the feelings and the traumas and the scars that it left you with. It is so 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 important to distinguish between those two. Now I know I mentioned that you could be a hundred percent over the person and zero percent over the situation. I know that's really extreme. Sometimes it looks a little bit different. Sometimes it looks like, well, I'm 70% over the person, but I'm like 10% over the situation. Good. That's like really good data for you to understand that, okay, I'm actually more over him than I thought I was, but there's still some healing. I still love them. I still think about them. There's still some healing that needs to be done there. But the majority of my healing is really about how it made me feel. The majority of my healing is really about the insecurities that it left me with. When you are able to really put that into words. You no longer need this person to validate you. You no longer need them for your healing. Your healing becomes something that is taken back into your own hands because if it's about the insecurities that the situation left you with, if it's about the version of yourself that you became in the process, no one else is going to fix that for you. No one else is going to heal that for you. Sure, someone else might have been the reason that you feel that way about yourself, but at the end of the day, no one is in a position to heal those things for you except for you. So it really, really takes you out of that victim mode and helps you be more of an act creator of the reality and the identity that you want to experience. The second thing I really want you to think about, and this builds right from that first thing, once you've been able to kind of audit what it is that you're actually suffering from, what it is that is actually causing you the pain. And again, more often than not, it's not always the, the feelings of wanting to be with this person. It's more so the doubts that it has brought up in you. I want you to embrace those things. This is grief, okay? I don't know if anyone has ever told you this, but breakups 
are grief. Someone doesn't have to die in your family for you to go through grief. You don't even have to go through a breakup for you to go through grief. You can be grieving a version of yourself that no longer exists. This happens to me all the time. I'm someone who is constantly evolving and changing. And if that, if you're watching this, I'm sure that you're like this too. And sometimes we truly are just grieving the version of ourselves that didn't know better. We're grieving the version of ourselves that we have to kind of kill off in order to grow and become this new version of ourselves. Breakups are no different. It seems like you're grieving the past relationship and that is part of it, but that is such an oversimplification. It is such an oversimplification to say that the reason that you're grieving is because that person is no longer in your future. That is one facet of it, but there's so much more. You're grieving the version of yourself that you had to leave behind in order to heal from this person. You're grieving the version of yourself that you had to show up as in order to be in that kind of relationship. Even if it was a great relationship, like not all breakups come from toxic relationships, but still there are certain values and beliefs that you formed with that person. And now you're left with those values and beliefs on your own and you're kind of encouraged. I don't want to say forced because you're not forced, but you're encouraged to re-examine those things and ask yourself, was this something that I came up with on my own? Is this something I want to carry into my future? Or is this something that me and this person came up with and I don't actually really subscribe to it anymore. Grief is really just growth. It's growth with some pain, but there's also gratitude. Like that's the thing. I feel like grief gets this depressing bad rep, but it's just not that. I lost my dad very suddenly in 2017 and truly I am so grateful for my grief process because after losing him, I really was left with all of those questions of who do I want to be? My role model, my dad, my love, you know, he's not in my life anymore to influence me the ways that he was. Who do I want to be knowing that this is no longer a person that is going to be with me phys in physical form in my future? It taught me so much about my values. It taught me so much about the things that I was raised with that I did want to carry on into my future. It taught me so much about some unhealthy attachments that I had to having that father figure in my life. Truly that process was not this like depressing sad thing for me. It was very much so this like beautiful butterfly coming out of her cocoon. I know that like that might seem like I'm romanticizing death, but I'm not. I'm just understanding that there's nothing I could do about that. So the only thing that I can channel my focus on is making the most out of something that is meant to bring me closer to myself. Breakups, no matter how they happen or for what reason, are meant to bring you closer to yourself. Instead of looking at this as a loss of a person or of a relationship or of a dream, look at this as an opportunity to spend quality time with yourself. Now more than ever, we live in an age where that is just not a thing. Women especially are taught that we just can't exist and be powerful in our own space. We need to be connected. We need to have a significant other. We need to constantly keep up with what's going on and have this really vibrant social life, which is great. But if you never understand how precious your solitude is, if you can't come back home, like figuratively and literally to yourself, what good are all of those relationships? What are they actually based off of? My breakups, were always such an opportunity to glow up and just have a say in who I wanted to be that wasn't unintentionally or subconsciously influenced by someone else. Because no matter how independent and smart you are, at the end of the day, if you're sharing space and energy with someone else, you're going to be influenced by that person's habits, that person's thoughts, that person's energy. And when you're able to come back and retreat and be on your own, you're able to be a much more active and intentional creator of those things. The last thing that I want to talk about, and this is kind of off the rip, I actually didn't even write this one in my notes. I want to stress to you the importance of journaling. So the other day I was talking about this with a friend, and this is my journal literally from college, and I swear baddies, like this is the truth right here, like this, this made me who I am. I was going through it, okay? I'm just gonna be 100% honest. Like, you can't really read it because my handwriting is like the matrix. But like, these were all pages of just me going through it. At the end of the day, journaling, there's so much psychology, there's so much research on how important journaling is to help you get in touch with what you're actually feeling. We have thousands of thoughts that just swarm around in our heads day after day. And a lot of those thoughts, they go unchecked. 
So it's like, imagine, this is a bad analogy, but imagine you're at the airport and people could just like get on planes without checking anything. People would be bringing all sorts of dangerous, <laughs> unhelpful things onto the plane. But your thoughts really don't have that process. Like they're not being put through any metal detector. They're not being put through any like scanning thingy thing. Your thoughts can be so dangerous. They can be so detrimental to your mental health. And even, you know, that's like at the most extreme. Sometimes those thoughts, they're not seemingly dangerous, but they're just not actually thoughts that are helping you become the person that you want to be. When you put pen to paper, you bring those thoughts out. And even if they are not the most helpful thoughts, because you always want to be real when you're journaling, you don't want to filter it. You see a separation between you and that thought because now it is on a page and you're able to hold an object and literally look at it and be like, is this what I want to think? Do I want to subscribe to this? Is this what I want to believe about myself? Whereas when that thought is in your head, it literally feels like part of you. It's inside of you. You can't hold it object. You can't distinguish between this thing, this belief, and you because that belief feels like it's part of you. I want you to understand that when you're going through grief, when you're going through a breakup, holding those thoughts object and getting in the habit of writing them down and communicating them and having kind of this dialogue between you and your journal every day, it really helps you take control of that process instead of letting that process define you and take control over you. Please, like if you take nothing from this channel, I want you to just go find a journal. It could be the ugliest journal or you can go on Amazon, find a cute one, for like six dollars i just ordered a new one that's supposed to come in today and i'm really excited about it i want you to just try it every single day the first thing that you do you know i'm not gonna say before you get on your phone because let's be real i get on my phone before i journal sometimes it's not the best but i'm not gonna tell you to do something that i don't even do the first thing you do before you have like an in-depth conversation with anybody that day is just jot all of those thoughts on your journal write out how you're feeling let it be unfiltered do not write as if you're writing to an audience just write let it all come out imagine all your your pain and heartache that would be living inside of you and causing you stress and making you break out just imagine like releasing that onto a piece of paper so that it's no longer defining you let me know if you are down to try any of these things i know firsthand how sometimes breakups seem super sad but from my experience breakups have always been a way to level the up like i've just leveled up so much so you can take control of what this chapter is in your life you can can define what this means about your journey you can look at this as spring cleaning where you're taking out the trash pun intended and you know creating space for a healthy love creating space for the person that's going to treat you the way that you want to be treated and want you just as badly as you want them i will be doing a video very soon on how i manifested ahmed that's a whole nother topic for another day but it's obviously related and i can't wait to share all of that with you i love you so much and as always stay powerful my loves